criticism from all sides over comments he made about abortion. A lot of these other towns that are trying to revitalize, they're just putting restaurants there. Yes. They put something that's going to draw people in to be active. What is it like to coach kids without disabilities? But that's what we keep right. hearing, that, oh, Mr. Trump didn't, didn't know, know who she was, and Corey Lewandowski didn't know who she was, and here you are saying that she's perfect. very she well, is known. Very well known. Most people in their 80s are enjoying retirement, but Buzz Aldrin isn't like most people. The cameras on board the New Horizon are so precise. If it was flying over New York City at the same altitude from space, you'd be able to make out these softball fields in Central Park. Adele's free action. The best. It's classic. Who would you want to sing with? I don't know. I think I'd want to sing, sing with James. I mean, Jay, I know. Right? Get it? Get in the seat? Yeah, because I'm not a good singer. Meg Oliver shows us two women who are making strides with groundbreaking technology. Good morning, Meg. Alex, good morning. Working from their kitchen table, two recent Harvard Business School graduates are hoping to change how the retail industry sees and sells to women of all skin colors. We are the first to tackle this problem for fashion. The problem, according to entrepreneurs Nancy Madrid and Atima Louie, has been fashion's limited range in the color nude. When you were growing up, what did the color nude mean to you? Hmm, it definitely meant beige. Uh, I have a lot of stories of wearing beige nude hosiery and just having ashy legs. Okay, so these are the women. The children of Sudanese and Mexican okay. immigrants bonded over the lack of choices in everything from lingerie and nylons to makeup. We were talking about needing flesh tone products and there just being this huge gap. And so it came out of this desire to do something good for the world. On a mission to change the standard of beauty for women around the globe, they launched their company Nudist last July, just months out of school. You can come to our site, try our nude meter. We digitize your skin tone and we match you with product that best matches your skin tone. They say their nude meter is the first of its kind. It's a proprietary algorithm. Between the two of us, we were scanning people's skin and looking at different like products versus skin tone and coming up with what were the different variables that we need to measure uh, to match product to skin tone. It sounds very Harvard-like. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we give the nude meter a shot. It starts by taking a picture of your hand on a white sheet of paper. So then you select uh, your skin tone, you self-select like okay. an area. So that that looks good. It looks good. And then you shop your skin tone. Now you Nine. come up as number seven. seven. That's your nude. Once you know your nude, the site curates a selection of lingerie, shapewear, and hosiery to match. They partnered with 11 companies that offer products in a wide variety of skin tones. Are you actually matching people's skin tone with products, or are you offering products that are close enough? We do offer products that are close enough because there's still a gap in the market for new products. We examined that gap when we went to the websites of 10 major retailers. We found few options for women of color. The current definition of nude, the beige tones, do not match 84% of the global population. So the opportunity is big to fix this. Julie Wilson is the fashion and beauty editor for Essence magazine. She says expanding the definition of nude isn't just a trend. I think it's a movement and everyone's talking about it right now, but I feel like trends are fleeting and I don't want this to be a fleeting thing. Consumers are talking about it on social media and fleshing out their concerns with hashtags like redefine nude and not my nude. I think social media is really the reason why this has all happened. It's really kind of energized people to be more um, uh, vocal about what they want. Companies are being called out. Yes. I, yeah, a lot. As more companies answer the call with more skin tone options, Atima and Nancy Absolutely. plan to expand uh, as well. So Nancy and I talk about launching footwear, which we call the most coveted nude item. Um, right now, if you go to Google and search nude shoes, you are not going to find anything that matches my skin tone. And our customers keep asking, when is footwear coming? Shoes. <laughs> yeah, it's all about shoes. Women love shoes. <laughs> Now, the nude meter isn't perfect just yet. The ladies are constantly refining the product to work out some kinks. But these young entrepreneurs are already working on those expansion plans. And that means moving out of Nancy's apartment and into new office space and even hiring some employees because they do everything themselves right now. I'm so excited about the story. I can never find nude that matches my skin tone. Right, and it's not just for darker skinned women. This is also for fair skinned women. Let's say a redhead has a, has the same sure. challenges when they go into the store looking for those products. That's a great idea. Yeah, Brilliant. wish them success. Yes. Much success. Yeah. <laughs>
Charles Coppert is a powerful presence in the water. Fast and fluid, each stroke smoother than the next. Nationwide, out of more than 50,000 swimmers, the 17-year-old from Orange, New Jersey, ranks in the top 6%. He will compete at nationals in August. I'm uh, very excited, actually. This is actually um, another opportunity to show what I can do. It was a rough start for Charles. Diagnosed with autism at three, he didn't speak until he was five. But his mom, Cheryl Paris, says everything changed when he started swimming. I noticed that after he got out of that pool, he was so calm. Dr. John O'Connor has worked with autistic children for more than 15 years. In his doctorate, he found aerobic activity repetitive in nature, like swimming or running, tends to reduce repetitive behaviors of autism. The autistic child is looking for repetitive activities that they can engage in because it will sometimes help them deal with sensory stimuli that they don't want to have to process. Dr. O'Connor says up to 30 minutes of aerobic exercise a day can decrease autistic behavior for up to 90 minutes post-exercise. The hand flapping and the jumping, uh, the pacing, the repetition, the scripting, all of that just somehow resolved itself. And resolved itself, you mean it just went away? It, it decreased significantly. I don't think that there's a cure, but it certainly helped decrease this behavior where it no longer interfered with his everyday life. There are many articles supporting the benefits of swimming and autism, but no long-term studies. After 14 years of swimming, Charles is confident it worked for him. Charles will swim at the college level this fall from Montclair State University as he pursues a major in theater. I always swim for life, you know, it's my main sport. I always love it. Do you feel calmer when you get out of the pool? Yeah, I do. I just, you know, breathe, just in and out. A calm feeling he hopes he can turn into gold at nationals. Good job, Charles, man. Meg Oliver, CBS News, Montclair, New Jersey. It's located at the crossroads of America where Interstate 35 and I-40 meet, the last place you'd expect to hear and see rushing rapids. In Oklahoma City, it's not just the skyline that's rapidly changing. <laughs> now you can catch a fast, adrenaline-pumping ride. <laughs> High-octane whitewater rapids under Oklahoma's bright blue sky. Spread over 11 acres, Riversport Rapids is the latest addition to the city's waterfront. A $45 million whitewater rafting and kayaking facility right off a revitalized Oklahoma River. When you think of Oklahoma City, you tend to think of football, maybe rodeo. You don't think of this. <laughs> That's why this is a game changer for Oklahoma City. Mike Knopp is the man behind the vision. 20 years ago, the rowing coach for Oklahoma City University had a dream. Why did you think it would fit here? I think there's a pioneering spirit here in Oklahoma City. The fact that, you know, we don't have mountains and we don't have the ocean and while it seemed far-fetched people really embrace this idea of doing something truly unique and, and something that you don't see all over the country this is how the river looked 20 years ago a dry riverbed littered with trash a tv dumped in the weeds another big storm in oklahoma and this is a real one. After a series of devastating floods during the Depression, engineers redirected the river away from the city. This used to be a muddy ditch. Tell yes. me about it. Well, it was a ditch that we mowed three times a year, and it was kind of a dividing line in Oklahoma City. Knob has turned the dividing line into a destination. In 1993, the city passed a one-cent sales tax dedicated to downtown projects. Four years later, crews built dams and filled in a seven-mile stretch of the river. We really saw the river and what this whole boathouse district uh, would provide would be a place that would bring people back together to the river for recreation. Recreation taken to a whole new level. Three years ago, River Sport Adventures opened. Only 50 feet from the Whitewater Center, the park has it all. From zip lining across the river, free falling off the 80-foot rumble drop, or shooting down America's tallest high-speed slide. Part of this was also about creating and infusing an outdoor culture into a place that really wasn't known for that. Did people think you were crazy? Well, I have to tell you, at first they did, but once we were able to present the vision and how it ties into what we've already created, I think it did start to resonate. It's really something to experience. Benita and Anthony, I've been whitewater rafting in Montana, and I can tell you, it feels like the real deal.
So how was this compared to just the kayaking? Because we saw so many people doing tricks and flipping right. over and whatnot. When I went down in the double kayak, that was unnerving. I'm not going to lie. The waves hit you hard, which is why you never see my reaction. Because our GoPro in the front of the kayak... Got knocked off. Right away. <laughs> <laughs> which is probably good because my reaction probably was I got to tell you, I spent a lot of time in that city back in the, uh, in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. And that is just transformational. I mean, that is so... It so reshapes what your perception of, of that town is. It's amazing. Absolutely. And you know what the trick was... Mike Knopp was saying that a lot of these other towns that are trying to revitalize, they're just putting restaurants there. Yes. They put something that's going to draw people in to be active. And, and, and it's nowhere else. That's yeah. the other thing. We right. applaud you and your wetsuit. Nicely yeah. done. Thank you. January 20th, 2017. Well, that is moving day for President Obama. That will be the last day he will be in office at the White House. And already it appears he has a plan for what he will do outside of the Oval. Take a listen to what he told faith leaders at the Easter prayer breakfast. After a, a, a good chunk of sleep when I get out of here, I'm going to be right out there with you doing some work. Those hours of sleep will have to wait. President Obama has more than 200 days left <laughs> in office. Donald Trump is making news for his answer to a question about abortions. During a town hall with MSNBC, the Republican frontrunner called to ban abortions and said if the practice was outlawed, women who have abortions should be punished. Should abortion be punished? Well, people in certain parts of the Republican Party and conservative Republicans would say yes. Donald Trump issued a statement shortly after his abortion comments saying, quote, this issue is unclear and should be put back into the states for determination. Like Ronald Reagan, I am pro-life with exceptions, which I have outlined numerous times. What do you want your legacy to be? To be uh, a appreciated for what I may have inspired other people to then carry on. Roger. His career certainly is an inspiration. He points out in the book that NASA rejected him when he first applied, but he says he knew the sky wasn't the limit, so he tried again, and of course the rest oh. is history. Good for and, him. and at 86, still, he's a massive social media presence, which huge, is huge, huge presence. Didn't you just find out how 926,000 followers? What's more interesting is it seems like when he tweets, he drums up so much interest in space, which is something that, you know, now that people are talking about privatizing it. You wonder what the future is. And in a lot of his tweets, he's wearing a T-shirt that talks about getting to Mars. Mars. That is yeah. his mission. All right, Meg Oliver, thanks so much.